What's up, people? Let your girl Adiola. So, Nigerians are saying that Mr. President should either resume or resign. We are not saying we don't like him. We are not saying we don't love him. We are not saying we hate him. We are just saying he should do the right thing. If the Nigerian youth cannot rise up to retrieve their stolen future. There is no future for them in this country. We are saying that the president will either resign or resume. Hey, I'm telling you, wait, nobody might be that. Eh? You know, it's good to see celebrities speaking out. Anyway, tell me what is wrong in what these people are doing. You elected somebody, the person is expected to deliver. What is wrong in people protesting? Look at Kole Dewo, if he's not delivering for you every week, won't you guys protest? Won't you say, ah, fire him, fire him, no be so? So why are the policemen, the Olokpa, why are they shooting tear gas at the protesters? <laughs> They are tear gassing us. They are fired under tear gas there now to disperse us. Ah! Father! Father! Even Charlie Boy! Charlie Boy! After inhaling tear gas, the man slumped though. But Charlie Boy slums to the ground. You see what? You see what I'm saying? Eh, Nigerian police, Nigerian Olokpa, why now? Why now? These people are fighting for everybody, no be so. They are also fighting for the same policemen that are shooting tear gas. So when a Nigerian protested in London, did you guys see the video? He was saying that Mr. President should go home. Why is it in London? And the presidency decided to call London police. I don't know if you guys saw it. <laughs> they thought they were in Nigeria, but the police came and they just sat with the guy outside the gate. <laughs> you know the sad thing? These people are hypocrites. When the pro Buhari protesters came out, we saw policemen escorting them. I said father look at the hypocrisy of nigerian policemen no the same policemen that were shooting tear gas and the other protesters no they were the same ones escorting the pro buari protesters how about a better law shame on nigerian police so speaking of shame how many kidnappers then have they discovered recently in nigeria i mean within like a week they've discovered at least two different kidnappers then i'm telling you kidnappers are now hiding their victims in the drainage we call it soccer way get out Public places where people are passing day and night who would have thought that they were hiding people in the drainage this one that you are seeing is at the Yija, along the lagos abel kuta expressway and people were passing there day and night my people please we need to be very careful because this is becoming an epidemic kidnapping people in nigeria this is so heartbreaking apparently some of the victims are being used for money rituals. You know, there are so many people in Nigeria now that are wealthy and people cannot explain the source of their wealth, but it doesn't stop them from taking the money from them. I mean, look at the guy that built a church in Ozubulu in Anambra State. Apparently he's a gang member, he's into drugs in South Africa, and they had the fight among them, the gang members. So they were looking for him when they went to the church and opened fire, killing 12 people and injuring 18 others. Can you imagine? Apparently the other gang thought that he would be at the church since he built to the church that's why they went there only for them to take innocent lives the governor said that he's into drugs in south africa police said that he's a gang member okay so can i just say this that nigerian churches hopefully this is something for us to learn from because so many churches in nigeria they don't ask questions they just take money from people that they know cannot explain the source of their money instead of the church to condemn what they are doing instead of the church to call a spade a spade so long as somebody has money we promote them we make them elder or whatever we give them special seats at the front of the church we invite them, even corrupt politicians people that we know are stealing money we invite them whenever we are doing fundraising they are the chairman the chair lady at the event for how long would this go on in the house of the lord we need to be careful we need to call a spade a spade we need to stop making everything about money in nigerian churches wake up stop making everything about money you see somebody as more important just because they can donate money you know, it's so sad because this is now becoming a trend on Facebook. You will see Nigerians spraying money at ceremonies as if they are spraying papers. Money that you know that if this person has worked really hard for their money, they can't be spending it like this. <laughs> If someone work 
hard to earn their money. I don't think they will be spending it like this. Hopefully, we can learn from what happened at that church. It's so heartbreaking for those who lost their family members, their friends, may their souls rest in peace. And I'm hoping that this will not repeat itself. And speaking of politicians stealing money, the Senate President Bukola Saraki said that he has returned all the pensions that he has ever collected from Kwara State. <laughs> Stop it, please. <laughs> Why are you laughing at? I'm trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> but it's so funny. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So I can it off. You did not touch I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyway, so very impressive, right? I, I mean, me, I was really impressed. You know, what a wonderful man. The only problem is that there's no way for anybody to verify that he returned any money. Especially because they said that the way he's returning the money is they are deducting the pension from the money that they owe him. How? The man is no longer a governor, right? And you say he's no longer collecting pension. So how are you owing him? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so he didn't deposit anything. They just said that they would deduct it from the money that they are supposed to pay him, that the money that they are owing him. They need to probe these people of Kuala State self. Whoever is speaking on behalf of Kuala State, they need to probe them. Anyway, after that, did you hear the news that the Senate president fired 98 out of 308? Fuck off for that! Fuck off! Sorry, over 300! Colleague, the old just told me. More than 308, just one person. So you understand? But what do I know? Mr. Senate President is good to have you. Let's see what Nigerians are saying. Me, I, I thought this is very impressive. You know what pained me <laughs> when that story came out. I was so, I was heartbroken. Because instead of Nigerians to be impressed that the man fired 98 eight, so instead of them to say how wonderful, they just cannot believe that the man had 308 in the first place. Listen to this. This person say that lol 308 is he disabled <laughs> my brother you know <laughs> i was i was about to ask the same question but you guys know i'm very gentle so I, there's no way i can ask such a question but it's true even if he's disabled i don't think he needs 308 but what do i know somebody else said that can we all imagine this 308 in the senate president's office hey that is true oh you know I mean, how do they hold their meetings? That is more than some churches care. 300 people. <laughs> that is more than some mosques. No, me so. Would they have to rent a place just for him to meet with his aide each time they want to meet or what? And then someone else said that it's all about clearing his name for the 2019 presidents. Hey, Nigerians! Nigerians! No, be me talk more, Mr. Senate President. Sure, you understand this? Are Nigerians talking? Why do you think the man is trying to be president? Eh? Someone else said that, well, that is to tell you how much plan he is making to become president by 2019. Let me stop reading because Nigerians, ah, you, are, you are becoming too bold. Talking to the Senate president like this happened. Why are you guys not impressed? The man was hoping that you would praise him for firing 98 out of over 308, you know, for reducing his staff. Why are you not deceived? I mean, why are you not uh, impressed? Sorry, Mr. Senate President, <laughs> deceived <laughs> and that was a slip of tongue. Um, let me just advise you, by the way, Augusta Raki, you're welcome to this program. <laughs> let me look here in case you're watching. If you want to impress people, me, I would suggest that you cut down your age to like 10. So you understand, you know, like 10 people. Uh -huh. That is where people will know that you mean business. If you want to impress people before 2019, you know, allegedly, in case you are thinking about becoming president, what do I know? You know, because it baffles me why you would need 300, I mean, over 308 in the first place. When we know that Nigerian senators, they spend more time on vacation than they do in the chambers. No, so it's like you don't know. They spend more time on vacation. They only meet like three days in a week. No, so sometimes four days. Yes, but sometimes two days or three days. We know now. And then they will give themselves long recess. They will say we are off for a month. We are off for two months. In fact, right now they are off for the next two months so for the next two months you know how many recess they
they've taken this year. Look at Uncle Dino now. Put up that. Hey, Uncle Dino. <laughs> Wonderful guy. He likes to post, you know. So the man posted this photo not long ago in a London hotel when he was supposed to be in the chambers in Nigeria walking. He posted the photo, you know, just to do shakara and say, ha. Huh. You know how he likes to preach when he posts his photo. <laughs> the Lord is good. I'm in London. This, this, that. The only problem is, a guy did not forgot to crop out the handbag and the tie of uh, the babe that was sitting on the bed. Yes, let them see. See you, see you, see you. I don't know how Nigerians spotted this, but they did. <laughs> you can trust Colin That was the first thing that he spotted. Anyway, <laughs> and then not only that, this people they just bought new set of cars, brand new. So why do you need 308 when it's not like you are doing? He said, "Boy, yo, Jimmy." He said, "Bri sope, you know, Gary Amudoson, Ebajedoru, Saturday or Wabo, Sunday or Joyce." You know what I'm talking about? The laborers, yes, that you have to get up early in the morning to go and carry cement and come back. They are giving themselves months of recess, resting from what? Eh? So why do you need 308, Ogasaki, when you are not running a company or a church, yes, or a mosque? Sure, you understand. And that is different from having the bodyguards. You know, yeah. Say bodyguards that is different from the bodyguards, the drivers, the cooks, the house help. Hapa, hey, Berolo, hey, Che Berolo, are you joining me? Hey, Baba, bring down the judgment so you understand. We are still waiting. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. My first shout out of the day goes to 22 year old Jesu Shemi Lore, Taloda Bijesu, popularly known as Shemi or Jeleye. Yes, so give it up for my brother. His name is authentic. There's no way he will get to that. They won't know that. He's Nigerian. Anyway, so the guy has been drafted into the U.S. National Basketball Association, NBA. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well. Shemi was born in the U.S., but his parents are from Kwara State in Nigeria. So a special shout out to his parents for supporting him all the way. Especially his mom. I heard that she's his manager and that she was the one that was driving him all over the country to audition. Sometimes the car would break down, but she didn't give up she kept going she believed in her son and today he made it to the nba and of course i'm sure that they are so proud and we are also proud of him i'm telling you nigerians are doing big things at home and abroad uh if your child wants to go into sports please please support them don't say that they must be doctor or lawyer or engineer by fire by force so you understand look at alex wobi who plays for us now look at judy gallo who played for watford he's now in china playing football and also look at kelechi Nacho and ahmed musa both of them play for Leicester City and I mean the list goes on and on they are all making us proud so congratulations to Shemi congratulations to his brother as well I heard that he played for Kansas State for four years and my next shout out of the day goes to 18 year old Unkechin Yeri Chidi Ogolu who made history as the youngest person to graduate from Harvard University this year and one of the youngest ever in the school's history to graduate yes so shock by shock and she is beautiful I mean, come on, girl, we're so proud of you. That's what I'm talking about. Unkechi is starting her PhD this fall at the age of 18. What were you doing when you were 18? Kondo, running after girls. Anyway, <laughs> so Unkechi finished secondary school at 14 in Nigeria and she got accepted at Harvard University here in the US and she moved and came immediately. Uh, she said something that I really like. She said that don't ever limit yourself because you think you can't do it or because no one you know had done it. You can always be the exception to the rule and end up being exceptional. Preach, preach, girl. That's deep. I love, I love it. So we're so proud of her. And my next shout out goes to Jeremiah Ola Dipupo, okay? AKA Jerry, who graduated first class in aviation engineering and pilot studies at the University of Salford in Manchester, UK. Yes, so first class in UK. I'm so excited about this. His dad sent me the news of his graduation. He said that they are from Afau Ekiti in Ekiti State. And we are so proud of of him of course his parents are proud of him as well and my last shout out goes to a brother and a sister in texas they are also a nigerian family ladies and gentlemen please meet chukwe buka ogona orajiato who graduated cum laude in microbiology and he's now going to med school yes so we are so proud of him and his sister crystal orajiato she graduated from high school and she's now going to the university of victoria in texas of course their mom is so proud of them she was the one that sent me the information and there she is looking Looking good, mommy. And of course, we are so proud of them to representing Niger. Every single one of you. Thank you so much for making us proud. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. 
Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it all right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.